this is Colleen from Keeping the Peace, Defensive Handgun Training for Women. And today, I want to talk about something a little more serious, I guess, um, still related to firearms and defensive training. Um, before I get into that, I just want to give a little shout out to Mama Tully. If you're not following her channel, you need to go check her out. But she and I just recently did a little trade, and she was willing to trade me um, a coin from when she was in the Air Force. She traded this to me for one of my t-shirts. This is just extremely cool. And I've got several coins that have been given to me by instructors and students. Um, so this one is going to be special along with all of those. So I just love it. Thank you, Mama Tully. Really appreciate it. Okay, I don't know if you can read this, but this is what we're going to be talking about today. I was planning on doing a video about knives today, but I decided I need to kind of put out um, a little bit of just an awareness video for people so that they can not end up in the situation that I'm in. Um, my time and exposure to lead has increased over time. And honestly, I had heard about lead being in bullets, and I had heard about, you know, washing your hands after you go to the range. I had heard a few people mention it, but honestly had never really paid a lot of attention to the necessity, never did any research into it. And all the people that I was with at the range never saw anybody really taking any precautions, so, I really didn't take it very seriously. Let's just go over lead and how it gets into your body and what it does to you. Um, first of all, uh, most bullets themselves are made out of lead. Some of the primers also have lead in them. So while you're shooting, there are particulates going into the air, falling down, and if there's a really good forced air system pushing that away from you, you may not breathe in much of it. But if there's not a lot of really powerful air pushing past you, it could be, you know, settling back down on you. It, you know, when you're cleaning your gun, there's going to be particulates there, too, that you're touching. And if you do it without gloves, of course, there's absorption. So, number one, you're breathing. Then there's absorption, you know, through your hands into your bloodstream. And then there's ingestion, where you've touched things that are contaminated and then either touched your mouth um, or rubbing the eyes, um, all those types of things that we do. So I've basically gotten the lead into my system all three ways. I spend an awful lot of time at an indoor shooting range, which um, shooting outdoors, of course, is going to be better if you have the opportunity to do that because it just dissipates into the air a little bit more. Um, and also being in the instructor role, spending so many hours in there and standing so close to the gun has put me at a greater risk of this too. But I've also absorbed a lot. I did not used to wear gloves when I cleaned my guns um, and I was really bad about, you know, I would do things and, you know, I was constantly touching my face because my hair was always tickling my face and I was constantly just doing that. So I wasn't cognizant of it at all. And ingestion, I'm guilty of, you know, if I have an eight-hour day at the range, I would throw a couple snacks in my range bag, and in between students, I would just grab something, pop it in my mouth. Honestly, didn't, I, that's bad, but I did it, okay? I did it for several years. Then, you know, went to a doctor with all sorts of symptoms that I've been having for a long time, and found out that a lot of them are caused by lead, and these are the, you know, some of the ones that you'll see if you do a little research online. We're going to skip down to the bottom here. Um, some common ones experienced in adults, abdominal pain, headaches, appetite changes, numbness and tingling in the extremities. This is one that I have a lot of and have had for a long time and have been blaming it on other things because I have some nerve injury issues also, but I think a lot of my issues could be related to the lead. Loss of sensation, and this was confirmed by my doctor because he poked my feet with needles and I couldn't feel it. My eyes were closed, so I didn't know what he was doing to me, but that's what he told me he was doing, and I didn't feel it. So um, fatigue, that's an extreme problem.
problem and uh, lack of mental acuity struggling with that more and more as time goes on irritability not so much sure about that you could probably ask my husband I'm, I'm probably irritable but um, the main things that I'm experiencing are lack of sensation fatigue lack of mental acuity and then the numbness and tingling in the extremities So now that this lead is in my body, it's being stored in my bones, and we're having to do things to try to pull it out of my bones, okay? Um, and that's difficult. We're using, you see this little pile of bottles here. These are half of the things that I take on a daily basis. Um, the others are to try to treat the symptoms of what I'm having. But all of these things you see right here, I'm not going to go through them one by one, but these things are being taken to try to draw the lead out of the bones to release it into the bloodstream and let it be eliminated. Um, and I'm choosing to do what we call oral chelation. So that's this, oral chelation. That's just the process of pulling something out of your body. Um, if you've ever heard of someone who overdosed and was given charcoal, charcoal was used as a chelating agent to pull that out of the system. So that's what these are being used for. And um, it's a very slow process. Oral chelation is very slow. And my doctor feels that that's the safest way because as you dump that lead into the bloodstream, it can damage tissues. It causes you to be even more tired. So I'm probably struggling with fatigue more now than I was maybe because of what these are doing. They're, they're getting that out of the bones and it's releasing it into my body. But um, he predicts that it's going to take 15 to 20 years for me to get this lead out of my body. That's a long time. Um, I'll be 40 this year, so that's, we're looking at me still dealing with lead issues when I'm 60. And that's with no further exposure. And I'm going to be exposing myself probably a lot more because I don't intend to stop teaching. Um, intravenous chelation is a more... Um, I guess vigorous way to go about it, but it can be dangerous because they're actually hooking you up to a machine, sort of like dialysis, but they're actually forcing that lead to be released from your system much more quickly and aggressively, and it can actually, if it's not done really carefully, it can actually do more damage to your tissues, more damage to your body, um, and they can actually draw things out of your body that you don't want drawn out. And if they don't supplement those back in correctly, you, they can make you way sicker than you already are. So that, that's real controversial. And in fact, it's not even allowed in the state of Kentucky. So if I wanted to do that, I would have to travel somewhere else to do it. So we've decided that that's not an option for us. We're going to continue to do the oral chelation. But this is going to be a long process. And I could be dealing with these symptoms, you know, for a long time. And they could get worse. In fact, they have continuously gotten worse over the last few years. So... That's something we're looking at. Well, please take this seriously. I'm not trying to discourage anyone from shooting. I would encourage you to shoot, and as often as you can get into the range, absolutely. I, I, if you can practice every day, great. Go for it. But there are things that you can do as preventative measures to protect yourself, and I just want to go over some of those with you. First of all, when you're cleaning your gun, use some, use some gloves just to protect yourself. I go through three sets of gloves when I'm cleaning a gun um, because there are steps in the process where I need, they just get so soiled, you just have to take them off. Um, and if I have to do anything to my face, if anything, you know, itches so badly I can't stand it, uh, I take them off, wash my hands before I touch my face now. I used to not do that. Um, so that's something you can try. I, for a while, when I first found out I had this lead poisoning, I was actually wearing these in the range when I was teaching. And... They were just getting holes in them and everything just from manipulating guns. They just didn't last. I haven't really found a good way to handle that. So I just try to be very careful about not touching my face when I'm in the range, even if I'm in there for six, seven hours. I'll try to take a break now between students, go out, wash my hands, and then do whatever, whatever I need to do. Um, that's the other thing. Now, before I leave the range, I wash my hands. I used to not do that. I would just go home and wash my hands before I ate. So by the time I got home, I'd already contaminated my car. Who knows how many times I touched my face. I was talking on my phone, so my phone was contaminated. Um, 
you know, and touch several things before I would get to the sink to wash my hands in the house. So don't do that anymore. I actually wash my hands at the range. It's best if you wash it in cool water because warm water opens your pores, dilates your pores, and makes you absorb more if it's on the surface of your skin. So using cool water is best. And they actually make soap specifically meant to remove lead and heavy metals from your skin. It's called D-Lead. This is the white version. I keep a thing of these in my range bag. And then the D-Lead soap I keep by the sink at the house to use um, when I'm teaching concealed carry classes after we do the cleaning portion. I have all of my students use this. Um, and I use it after I'm cleaning guns here too. And the D-Lead wipes, I keep them in my range bag after I'm done with each student before I walk them out now. I'm actually using these to get whatever I can off of any exposed skin. So if I have a short sleeve shirt on, I'm talking from here down. Um, and I also try to do that, you know, before, like when I go to the trunk, after I leave the range, I've already washed my hands, but I still have to deal with my range bag, which is, I'm sure, highly contaminated. So once I get into the trunk, my, you know, headphones off and all that put away, then I'll do that again before I get into the cab of the car where I would touch other things. Um, I try really hard not to use my phone in, in the, while I'm at the range because that's on your face. So if you can keep from using your phone, I know a lot of people like to use their phone to take pictures while they're at the range. Um, if you do that, I would recommend using some kind of some kind of you know rubbing alcohol or some kind of wipe to clean that off before you start putting it back on your face. I know these seem really nitpicky, a lot of little things, but a lot of little efforts put together can protect you in a big way. So there are some people that recommend that you wear certain clothes to the range, put them in, you know, wash them separately from the rest of your family's laundry. I'm not doing that yet. I wash all of our laundry together, but there are some people that recommend that using like a certain overshirt while you're shooting and, you know, wash it separately from other clothes. I'm not doing that because by the time that I found out I had lead poisoning, every pair of shoes I owned was probably contaminated <laughs> pretty much, you know, every hat that I own, I've just, I've worn all of my coats there. Pretty much everything that I have has probably been worn at the range because um, I'm there so much. So it was really too far gone for me to even think about doing that. But if you're a new shooter, that might be something you want to do. Use the same coat and the same pair of shoes when you go to the range. That way you're not contaminating everything in your closet like I've done. Um, and again, this is not meant to scare people away from shooting. I would encourage you to shoot as often as you possibly can. I'm just encouraging you to take some of these small precautions to avoid yourself getting into the situation where you're having to take all this stuff and having all of these types of symptoms because I'll, t I'll go ahead and tell you that the numbness and tingling in the extremities affects my shooting in a big way. Um, there are times when the numbness and tingling are so bad that, I mean, I'm, I'm having to train myself a lot with my support hand. I'm, I'm at points sometimes where I'm thinking about having to carry my gun on the other side of my body. It's, um, you know, I'm having to train for a lot of things that I never thought I would have to train for because of the numbness and tingling, which, you know, I do have other nerve issues too. I don't know if all of this is caused by the lead, but I do know it's been confirmed that lead to the level that I have it in my body can cause the symptoms that I have and it can definitely exacerbate other symptoms that I already had before from cubital tunnel syndrome, which is another nerve issue I've got going on. Um, if you have any of these symptoms already, if you're already a shooter, you've been shooting for a while, and you have any of these symptoms I talked about, abdominal pain, loss of sensation, fatigue, lack of mental acuity, irritability, headaches, appetite changes, or numbness and tingling in your extremities, you may want to go have your lead level checked. Um, if you're an instructor and you're spending a lot of time in the range, it might be something you want to check every six months just to keep a baseline going. So there's a lot of things that 
can be related to this. And of course, my level is way higher than two, and and your level may be higher than mine. So just just check it out and um, take these precautions to prevent yourself from having this problem, so that you can enjoy shooting for a long, long time and not have anything interfere with your ability or interfere with your just your general quality of life. I'm mainly putting this out there as an awareness, uh, kind of like a just a beacon to let people know, hey, this could be an issue and you can prevent it. Everything that I'm experiencing right now could have easily been prevented had I just put a little bit of effort and thought into protecting myself, and I didn't. <laughs>